Hi, my name's Matt Collins. I'm the fishery owner here at Beausoleil and what I'd like to show you in this video is how to tie a really simple yet highly effective uh, carp rig. I've been fishing with this rig at my lake in France now for three years and uh, it's caught me just about everything that swims there. It's, uh, it's good for catfish as well and um, landed cats up to 85 pounds on this rig and uh, it really is very simple to, um, uh, to do. So, as you know, there's loads of carp rigs out there. What makes this one special? Well, for me, it's about versatility. This rig will fish over a full range of bottom types. You can fish it in, uh, in silt, um, on hard patches, uh, it'll fish in light leaf debris, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's also very difficult for the fish to, uh, to deal with and eject. Um, it's incredibly good for getting bite indication on very, very slack lines. You can fish this up against a margin and uh, no matter which way the fish swims, be it left or right or towards you, you will get a run. So, let me take you for a spin around the components that uh, we're going to use to tie the rig. Okay, so to start off with, we need uh, two 20mm 20 uh, 20 bottom baits. These are my hand-rolled blue oysters that we sell here on site. Very effective bait. Next up, we have a size 4 wide gape in the uh, X pattern. Very strong hook. We're going to tie the uh, actual rig itself with 25 pound uh, supernova. Very good material. Then we're going to couple the braid to the main line with a size 8 ring swivel. We're also going to incorporate a short length of rig tubing and a tail rubber. Lead wise I'm using a 3.5 ounce uh, flat pair, this one's from uh, Avid, I also use the quarter ones as well. Uh, the most important thing, whichever um, lead, uh, inline lead you do choose to uh, use, you have to take the insert out. Okay, so we start off, we pass the braid through the front of the eye of the hook. very important that the length of that loop is about one and a half times the diameter of the baits that we're going to tie. And we just trim off the tag end, just leave a couple of mil, that's fine. And we'll uh, hook our bait and needle into the, uh, into the loop here, slide on the first bait, slide on the second bait, and then we're going to put our hair stop in there. You can use any type of uh, hair stop you like. These uh, these flat ones are just uh, are just fine for that. Right, let's go on to the real important stuff: tying the uh, tying the, uh, the actual rig itself. So uh, it's very important the way I set this up. My nail is perpendicular to the point of the hook. The baits are pulled up behind my thumb and index finger there so that fixes the length of the hair each time okay then I whip away like that to avoid the join in the eye of the hook and I stop when I get to that point there and the uh, braid is ex exiting the um, touching the touching the point of the hook there perpendicular to the shank right Next I've swapped hands and uh, we're going to put two whips behind the hair of the hook. It's two like that. Transfer hands again, just slide those up. We're going to go once over the knot there, that just locks the knot in position before we pass the hair back through the eye of the hook. Off about 11-12 um, uh, inches of the, uh, of the braid and then we pass that through the back of the hook and then we can uh, moisten that before uh, tightening it down. Okay, before we go any further I want to explain exactly what, uh, what we've done here and why. The reason for tying the loop at one and a half times the diameter of the baits was so that uh, the knot in the hair ends up in the middle of that bait. That locks 
these baits together so that that one won't slide down and start interfering with the hook when the hook's trying to do its important job of gaining you a hook hold. We've added two turns behind the uh, behind the hair to create a kicker okay so that when this rig is under tension the hook, uh, the hook kicks uh, kicks out like that the reason for the single over wrap is to uh, help provide an additional lock on the knot it stops the uh, knot slipping and rotating and uh, that's, uh, that's what all these little features do okay so when we pick up the rig by the baits this is how it should look the uh, point there should be hanging uh, roughly uh, roughly flat to the uh, to the floor um, and the uh, hair the the position of that hair creates that pivot point that's why it's important to have that pivot point exiting exactly perpendicular to the point when we swing it round the other way you'll see that the hook is hanging down exactly vertically therefore whether it goes in the middle the left or the right hand side of the uh, of the mouth of the carp it's going to get a hook hold it's not preferring to pick up uh, one way or the other all right so it's giving you a good uh, a good chance of pricking either way right so now we're ready to make the connection to our swivel we're going to pass through once and a second time going back through the same direction yourself a little bit of extra room there. We form a loop. Start whipping round. One, two, three, four, five. Gently start to pull that up. And we just that down when we get to there we need to wet that so we've moistened that, that knot up and then got a uh, rig puller and a leather glove and we're just going to uh, tighten that up nice and solid and that knot is not going in anywhere right, and we're going to trim that tag end off I always leave this uh, about five mil uh, five mil long just for um, uh, it, it it might fray a little but it really does uh, does no harm at all Right, next we need to connect, um, uh, get our mainline set up. So uh, I've got some 15 pound GR60 there, got some shrink tubing threaded on, and the first thing that goes on is our three and a half ounce inline lead with the insert removed. Slide that up there. Then we're going to put on our tail rubber. So next we're going to make our main line uh, connection knot to the swivel. So we go through the swivel once, through the swivel twice, same direction. Pull a little line through. Form our loop. that up, sliding down, I'm going to moisten that, then it's out with the uh, puller and the glove again and uh, just give it a good old, uh, good old pull. Right so you'll notice that I have not cut the, uh, cut the tail, it's about two inches long at the moment and what we're going to do is we're going to push the tail rubber over the top of that swivel like that. We're going to put the uh, anti-tangle tube in the tail as well. So now we're going to put the lead in place and we're going to take our telltale tail we're going to place that up inside the insert. We're going to push on the, uh, on the rubber 
and you see you've got a loop of uh, a loop of lines sticking out there. Right, to finish, we're just going to take a couple of blobs of putty. And one on there. So that's what we're finished with. Right, so let's have a look at how this rig does on the palm test. Just laid it in my palm there, and he's over. He's over straight away. Now, this hook's uh, brand new out of the packet. I would never fish with it brand new out of the packet like that. I would always sharpen it up because if I do this again, um, you'll see that oh, skid, 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 and useless. So you've got to sharpen up your hooks, and we'll talk about that in another uh, in another video. So let's have a look at how this uh, rig actually uh, uh, fishes in an angling situation. Um, yeah, don't worry about the fact that uh, the uh, baits would land very close to the lead. That's of no concern to me whatsoever. Cart comes along, picks up the baits. It's going to tighten uh, uh, tighten the rig. It's going to hit the lead. And the first thing he's going to do is try and shake that off. One little shake and that lead's off. Now whichever way the fish moves away from you, obviously, you're going to get a run. If the fish moves to the side of you, you're going to get a run. Back away from you, you're going to get a run. So this, act, this lead system is uh, acting as a uh, super slack, semi-fixed setup. Uh, it's basically going from a semi-fixed to a running lead and you can fish very very slack lines with this setup and you will always get an indication on the bobbin and on the alarm. So let's have a look at what this telltale here, here is uh, doing. So when we get a uh, pressure from the carp in this direction the tail rubber pops out, the tail pops out and if you wound the rig back in, it would actually look like that. Now, that's fine if you've got a carp on the end, you've just had a take. What happens if you haven't got a carp on the end? Well, basically, you've just been done. Let's have a look at uh, what happens when you get a liner. So, if we, uh, the carp comes along, moves that lead, the lead stays on the tail, uh, on the tail rubber, and you're still, you know, you're going to get an indication at this end, but when you wind it in, you're going to see that that tail is still in place. Now, what's happened is you've just got a liner, you haven't been done at all. You might have had a screaming take, it doesn't matter, it wasn't a bite. So, let's have a look at uh, how this uh, rig casts. And um, so when it's in flight, lead's travelling first, obviously. Bait's trialling somewhere up here. Now, if you cast this rig straight into the water, the lead's going to plunge in. The uh, flailing uh, baits will very likely spin round and tangle on the tail rubber. And when you wind in, you're going to be fishing with something that looks like that. Not exactly what you are trying to achieve. So when you're fishing with the uh, bow sleigh rig, when you're casting this rig especially, you must stop the lead before it hits the water. All right? That's stopping the lead in flight, 12 inches, a couple of foot above the water. What that's going to do is the lead will decelerate and stop. The baits will fly forward like that and the whole rig will land on the water like that. All right. The lead will then plunge through the surface, the baits will follow and it will come forward like that on the elasticity of the line and it's going to land something like that. And that means you, uh, your presentation is, uh, is very good 
there's no tangles and it's effectively fishing. It also enables you to feel the um, feel what sort of bottom the lead has uh, landed on. Very important for when you're trying to target a small hard spot, for example, in amongst um, some silt. Now, when I'm dropping this rig um, from a bait boat, I'll just uh, put it in a hopper like that. I might have to put a little um, uh, bend in the uh, rig just like that. Depends how big your uh, your bait hopper is, and um, when the uh, when the trap opens, what's going to happen is the lead will go first, the bait will follow it, and then the putty will keep the, the uh, braid pinned down. The bait will land next to the rig, and that's absolutely fine. So if I want to do uh, drop this uh, rig from a rowing boat, what I'd do is I'd hold it by the baits, get over our spot, and plop, leg goes in, rig will fall down like that, and that's how it's going to be fishing. A little scattering of bait over the top, and that's just what we're looking for. So before I actually fish with this rig, the uh, last thing I do is sharpen the hook. Right, so I'll just do the uh, finger hang test here. This is an out the packet hook. I haven't stabbed that in, I've just hung it up. And if I go to invert my finger, that drops off. All right, that's a fail in my eyes. So in the next video, I'll show you all about hook sharpening and how to do it uh, to a level that you'll, you'll have never seen before. So there we go, the Beausoleil rig very simple to tie, very effective and uh, good luck with it.